Hello everyone, and welcome to my channel, Radium Studios. Now, if you are seeing this video for the first time, I highly recommend you do not go back any further beyond this point. I used to do a lot of <clears throat> really dumb playthroughs and, and the like, and it was an interesting time. Anyways, so today I am going to be doing something I have been wanting to do for a very long time. Um, I wanted to take videos of several of my niche challenges, but then my headset broke two weeks after I bought it, and because warranties are weird, they didn't replace it. But I finally got a mic, and I am looking forward to doing this. So the challenge we're doing today is called the, um, an overly detailed challenge. And, um, <clears throat> just so we're all on the same page, I am going to read the challenge to you so you can sort of get the gist of it, and then we will go forward. I'll introduce our lovely starter families, and we'll see how this goes. So. I posted it on the niche forums. I'll uh, put the link in the description so that if you want to, you can try it. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I'm a little, um, stuffy. I just got over a really bad cold, so forgive me if I sound a little clogged up or if I cough a bit. <clears throat> I have to clear my throat. Okay, so the overly detailed challenge. This is a challenge all about social structure. In this challenge, there are two social layers. You should use a very large island to allow this challenge to really take form. And here we are on a peaceful meadow. It happens to be nicely divided in half. And of course the bigger side will go to our lovely nobles in the center here. And this isolated island will be a perfect home for the matron and any orphans that arise. <coughs> so, on top are the nobles, of course. Nobles are the stronger, higher ranking faction. They are generally very beautiful to you, of course. And will not bother with things like collecting grass. Nobles, however, do love a good hunt and chasing down rogues. They mostly live off the work from the villagers. They should have their own space on a separate part of the island than the villagers, which they will. They have the alpha rank, which I forgot to do there we go everybody's fixed now <clears throat> on the bottom are the villagers villagers are normal everyday nichelings with whatever appearance they may hunt collect grass pick berries and all other nicheling related things each nicheling family has to have two parents and no more than four children a couple cannot have more children until one of them dies or is married off each family should each have their own small house in the island with at least one line of darkness between them and any neighboring family. They have the beta rank, which Ooh. is actually correct. Okay. <clears throat> their gems can be colored between families so you can tell who comes from where. Generally, a house will consist of some kind of food source and a nest or at least enough space to make one. So uh, I'll show you how that works as we go in. So marriage. Daughters are very prized, especially a particularly pretty or talented daughter. Define as having three plus in any skill or special skills such as weather prediction, this is up to you. When a daughter is born, all genetically compatible males will fight for the right to the daughter. If you have a lot of genetically compatible males, you can choose to limit the amount or only give each male one number so that the numbers don't get unmanageable. Use a die or a random number generator and give two numbers to each male. For example, Male 1 gets 2 and 6. Male 2 gets 1 and 3. Male 3 gets 4 and 5. The male whose numbers gets called wins the daughter. This is absolute, even if you didn't want that female and that male to mate. 
However, if the daughter is particularly desirable in your eyes or by raw stats, and a noble family has a genetically compatible son, you must flip a coin to decide if the nobles take the daughter instead, regardless of whether you wanted to her to mate with the nobles or not. <clears throat> of course, this can always result in a lot of forbidden romances, subterfuge, sabotage, and family rivalries. This challenge is great fun if you're into roleplay, and that is what we'll be doing here. So if you're not that nerdy, you probably won't like this video. Once a daughter reaches adulthood, she should get her own space with her husband and start having children as soon as possible. Their gems should gain a unique color, which all their children will inherit. Now for orphans, and this is our lovely orphan matron, Matron Tara, who is infertile, unfortunately. <clears throat> Orphans are the children of mothers and rogues, a child, children a family has over their four-child limit, or children whose parents have died. Somewhere on your island, there should be an orphan matron, Tara here. Um, orphan matrons are usually older nichelings, sicklier, crippled nichelings, or infertile nichelings. The orphanage should be separate from the normal area where your nichelings live, though not too far away. Orphans have the omega ring. Orphan daughters can be married off when they reach adulthood. Usually only families that cannot seem to win a challenge will accept an orphan daughter as a wife. Nobles will never take an orphan wife. If there is no family who wants the orphan wife, she can either become a matron or a slave. <clears throat> orphan sons may be married off if there are no other genetically compatible males for a given female. Otherwise, they begin work as matrons or become slaves for the nobles. This part of the challenge is mostly optional, but it does become useful if the orphan children have immunities that become rare in the common populace. Matron and orphan gem colors are orange unless they marry, after which they take their mate's gem color. Matrons cannot marry or have mates. There can only be three matrons at a time. And of course, absolute rules for this clan. <clears throat> Villager females, especially married females, who mate with rogue males, become ostracized. They can either be banished or given the Omega rank and forced to do slave work like clear grass for the nobles, harvest stinky fruit, or become babysitters or orphan matrons. Their illegitimate children become orphans or can be banished and immediately killed if you choose not to do the orphanage. Villager families cannot become noble families, though a family who produces desirable, healthy children is usually considered more highly among the clan members. Noble females who bring shame to the family name, for example breeding with a rogue or a slave, are demoted to villager. She cannot return to the noble rank ever again, and any children born from the demoted noble female cannot marry into noble families. <clears throat> If a male cannot produce children after five failed mating attempts, so six attempts in total, their daughter can choose to turn to her birth family and be married off to another male nichling. A female can choose to give a male more chances, but generally will give up after ten tries or so. That male cannot compete for that daughter in her next challenge, so they couldn't, like, immediately win her back. <clears throat> An infertile daughter or son is usually banished, demoted to a slave, or made into an orphan matron, as they are considered burdens on their family. Wanderers are always a villager and cannot marry into noble families. However, their children can, given they are talented and or desirable enough. Nobles decide things like moving islands and serve as arbitrators in disputes. However, we will not be um, moving islands, because that's just a whole mess. <clears throat> okay, so the settings here is a uh, baby last for two days. Uh, they will be children for five, teens for 12, and then adults for 61 days. The pregnancy duration is three days. Enemy damage is times 10, environmental damage is times five, hunger damage is times five, healing is times five. <clears throat> So, <clears throat> I am so sorry. Uh, let's meet our nichelings, and then I will cut it there to make sure this all worked out correctly. And I will probably post the next part immediately so we can actually start playing. Okay, so first we have our two noble families. This is Amaria Skyfall 
very beautiful, very beautiful. Of course, she looks almost exactly like her husband, which does imply some things about maybe their family tree being a little circular. But <clears throat> nobody cares. Here we have Tobin, who had a pattern like a Dalmatian. That's new. Um, next we have the other two nobles, the Dovewing family. They, of course, have the Savannah horns and the poison fangs. They are very slow, though. The only thing that saves them is they are very small and have good back legs. <coughs> Next up we have, let's see, the Cherry Petal family. This is Mia Cherry Petal. She, she got some interesting traits. Okay, okay, we can work with this. Boy, is she red. Oh, she's beautiful. Okay, and this is Sky Cherry Petal, her husband. We got the stinky tail, one velvet paw, one running leg, and a mask pattern. Ah, okay, not bad. <clears throat> I am so sorry, everybody. Okay, this is Erica Rainfeather. Ooh, she's big. Huh. Um... She and her husband, Zach, pretty well matched. Yeah. Oh, and Zach can fish. Okay, that's great. <clears throat> so, let's see. <clears throat> Amaria is, she is complacent. She pretty much just follows wherever her husband goes and doesn't think about it too hard. And Tobin is the kind of tough dad figure that is always like two inches away from beating his children. He thinks firm discipline is the best way to raise a child. Nobody's gonna convince him otherwise. Um, Angel. Angel is very demanding. She has always gotten whatever she wants in life. And she doesn't really want anyone to bother her or break that illusion. And so everybody around her kowtows to her every whim because they are afraid of her wrath. And then her mate, Felipe, um, he's a doormat who does whatever his wife tells him. No matter what, she could demand anything, he would try to do it, or get a slave to do it if he could. Um, Sky is... Sky is weird, breezy, kind of aloof, doesn't really seem there all the time. Like he's perpetually zoning off, which uh, doesn't really bother Nia, Mia, Mia, doesn't really bother Mia. She's just, she's just trying to make things work in her life. And, and she's willing to put up with whatever, do whatever, to, to make things work. Um, Rainfeather is really huge and really scary looking, but she actually is just really chill. She's really sweet, she's really motherly, she's always wanted a family. Um, she's really beautiful, I think. She was... I was really lucky she wasn't snatched up by one of the nobles before being married to Zack. And Zack is kind of meek, unassuming, um, doesn't really speak much, but he's not unfriendly when he talks to you. He's very polite, but he kind of keeps everybody except Erica at arm's distance. Um... But Erica makes him happy, so they've been together a long time. Oh, and Tara. T 
Hera is actually Skye's sister. But Skye was born with perfect fertility, and Terra was born with none. And fearing that her daughter would be killed, um, she managed to get Terra made into the clan's first orphan matron. So she was not banished and killed. And so here she stands, alive because Skye's mom couldn't bear to see her daughter get killed. So she still lives as the sky. So Tara's ter technically Terra Cherry Petal, but um, orphans and orphan matrons are stripped of their family name as a sort of um, it's a sign you're an orphan. You have no family name. And yeah. That's a, that's a thing. Okay, so we've got a good island here. Alright, I'm going to cut the video here. And if things go well, I should have both of these episodes out together tomorrow. Um, I hope you guys like my videos and that you want to come back to my videos. Um, and I hope you'll join me next time.